Hi, I wanted to share with you today a little device I invented, a fly killing device. It works like this. You pull back this little string, sling, and you let it go and it flies forward, boom, 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 and it will kill the fly. And uh, you don't have to go chasing anything. You can use it over and over again very quickly. And it's very effective. Unlike a regular fly swatter, it's easy to carry with you. It's very small. And unlike a regular fly swatter, you can get in between corners, on top of objects, between objects. It's very effective at killing individual flies. Also, unlike a regular fly swatter, this thing usually does not make a mess. It usually does not squish the fly. Now I admit, when sometimes when you hit a perfect shot, it will squish the fly. But most of the time, the rubber band just knocks into the fly so hard it kills it. Flies are pretty delicate, and if you just if the if if the contact is made, the fly will die. And most of the time, there's no mess. Now you may I'm, I'm going to show you a video where I kill these. Uh, aluminum virtual flies. Now the thing is, you may think that that's not realistic, but uh, this thing is so fast when it goes off, the flies do not even react. So it's a matter of whether you hit the spot or not. If you hit the spot, you're going to kill the fly, whether it's a virtual aluminum fly or a real fly. So let's watch the little video segment demonstration. Okay, here's the final product that I came up with. This is what it looks like when it's all folded up and ready to carry. When you want to use it, you simply unwind the rope and you're ready to go. And when you want to use it, you simply pull back the string and fire at the fly. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take off this red overwork tape to show you uh, how it's constructed. Okay, here you see the device without the red tape on it. And it consists of this wooden handle and a hinge which I make out of a has block which you can get at a hardware store. And the hinge is attached to the wood in such a way that it can only go backwards this far, but in this direction it can fold all the way forward. In this direction it hits the wood and it can only go so far. So when you shoot it, you shoot like this. The hinge will not bend any further back. And then when you release the shot, it's going to go forward and the hinge is going to get out of the way. See the path of this rubber band wants to go right where the original point of contact is, right there. But as the rubber band goes forward, the hinge is going to get out of the way, allowing for a, a powerful and an accurate shot. So this little device consists of this wood handle, this little hinge, a set of elastic bands which give it power, then this extension string which gives it the range, the range to, be, to hit a fly up to one and a half feet away. Then you have this little knot at the end, which gives it a little bit of weight. And finally you have this extra little rubber band which I attach, which increases the kill zone. Because as, if you were to see this in slow motion, I imagine, the, as it goes forward, this thing is flapping all over the place. And it, flies are quite delicate, and if any contact of the rope or the 
rubber band or the knot makes contact with the fly at that speed, the fly is killed. And I know this is true. I've had lots of experience. I've done this many. I've already killed many, many flies with this device. So that's how the device looks. And if you're still interested, I'm now going to show you how to make this device. Okay, so let's construct our device. The first thing I have to do is modify the Hass block. I'm going to measure 1 and 3 eighths inches from the center of the hinge out, and I'm going to cut it there. And after I cut it, I'm going to drill a hole, 5 16 inch, inch hole, a little bit from the edge. I'm going to cut it, drill the hole, and sand it down so it's smooth. And so after I do that, this is what the finished product will look like. And you notice it, it bends very easily, and it's not too heavy, it's not too light. This is an example of a perfect Hass block for this project. Okay, the next thing I'm going to have to do is mount this uh, hinge on the wood. This wood is one by two, uh, six inches long. And I'm going to mount it. Now you notice that there's a flat side and there's a flat side where the hinge sticks out. I have to mount it on the flat side and I'm going to mount it so that exactly one inch sticks out. Okay, And this will uh, allow it this will prevent the, the hinge from going, any, when it's mounted, to, from going in this direction too much, but in the other direction it can go back. So I'm going to mark these holes and I'm going to mount this, and you're going to see the finished result. Now I'm going to mount this hinge using uh, one half inch thin, one half inch screws so that uh, the screws will not go through the wood and it, they're not so thick that uh, it's going to crack the wood or anything like that. So now let me mount this, mount this uh, device on here. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to shape this piece of wood so that it looks nicer and it's a handle and it fits in my hand. And I'm going to do this by carefully, I'm going to do it a little bit quickly here because you're watching, but you're going to want to be careful. You're going to draw a line, you're going to go in, you're going to go along the hinge line, you're going to go in a little bit like this, down, same thing on the other side, you're going to draw that line. And again, you're going to do this more carefully than I did. I did a, a quick job because I'm just demonstrating how to do it. The next thing you do is you take the hinge back off. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your saber saw or your jigsaw and you're going to cut along here. You're going to cut that out. You're going to sand it down, round it out. And this is what your finished product is going to look like. Uh, nice little handle, not too big, easy to hold. There's your three, three your screw holes. And I also sanded uh, the, the edge here so that uh, it slants away from, this, from the edge where the screw holes are. That will make it less likely that the elastic band will get caught as it goes past here. Okay, so this is the finished example of the handle. And now, of course, you're going to mount the hinge back onto the handle. Okay, done. Now you're ready to make your extensor rope. And the extension, I made it to be 18 inches long. Uh, you may experiment possibly with making it a little bit longer. Okay, so here's my rope, my twine, 1 8 inch twine. This is polyester. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a figure 8 knot in one end. Okay. And then I'm going to measure off about 18 inches and I'm going to make a loop in the other end 
which is the total length between the edge of the loop and the knot is approximately 18 inches. Okay. I'm going to cut this here. Cut this here. And then I'm going to take a lighted candle. I'm going to apply heat to here so that it will melt into the loop so that there won't be any uh, unraveling and it will be nice and clean. I'm going to do that to both ends. And after I finish, here's what the result is going to look like. You see, uh, it's, the heat has melted the string right in there so there's no extra string sticking out from this loop or from the knot. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mount the two elastics on this device. So I'm taking two elastics. Uh, these are 1 8 inch. You might experiment with just one 1 4 inch elastic, but I don't have those available, so I'm using two 1 8 inch elastics. I put them through here, through the hole, and then I loop it back around and through the loop and pull so I have an arrangement like this. Next, I'm going to attach the loop to the two elastics, the extension to the two elastics. I do that by sticking that through here like this, and then I put the knot through the loop, and I pull it all the way. Finally, I'm going to attach a rubber band to the end here. I talked about this earlier. This makes the, the killing more likely because the, as you shoot it, the rubber band is going to flap all over the place and more, make it more likely that you'll be in contact with the fly. And then, so far, you have, it's almost done. Okay, very close to being done. My final thing is I'm going to take, and this is optional, but I, I think it's worth doing. I'm going to take my tennis overgrip and I'm going to mount it onto this thing so that it looks nice and it provides a soft grip. That's it. Well, that's about it. This device, it looks very simple. It is very simple, but believe me, it took a lot of experimentation to get something this simple that works so well. I wish I could have shown a demo with real flies, but that would have been a lot of work to set up. Maybe you doubt that I can kill real flies as easily as I demonstrated with the virtual aluminum flies, but take my word for it, I've already killed hundreds of flies with this thing. It works really well. To effectively kill a fly, you have to get within about one foot of the fly, and that's pretty easy to do if you go slowly. That's no problem. And once you're within about one foot of the fly, your kill percentage is, is pretty high. Well, that's about it. I hope at least a few people try making this and let me know how it works out for you. That's all for now. Bye.